Hello, I'm Miss Ashley from FIVO Kids Art Academy, and welcome to another amazing art class. For our project today, we are going to be drawing Walt Disney's first ever Disney princess, which is Snow White from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. For a list of supplies, check in the description of this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we have Snow White from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Let's go ahead and get started with our practice draw. And for our practice draw, I want you to make sure that your paper is tall, up and down, which means vertical. I also want you to use that pencil with your eraser, but I'll be using a Sharpie so you can see my lines. Now the first thing we need to do is draw the part to Snow White's hair. I'm going to start not quite at the top. I'm going to draw a curve line going down here and a curve line down there. This is going to be her forehead, where her eyes are also going to go. We need to add more of her hair though, by starting here and drawing kind of this stretched out letter S. So now that we have the hair drawn, we can go ahead and focus on that chin by curving down and going back here curving down. Make sure it ends at somewhat of a point. And now we'll continue the rest of Snow White's hair. Now Snow White has that iconic red ribbon, so we're just going to draw a circle. Then on the left, we're going to draw kind of what looks like this letter C, but we're going to curve back. And we'll do the same thing on the right side curving back in. Now, if you find this to be a little bit hard or you are still working on anything, you can always go ahead and press pause on your video. For that ribbon, we're going to start on the left side. We're going to curve down at a point and curve back up. And we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Curve down and then back up. Now we're going to add a rainbow above that bow by drawing that rainbow that goes all the way down. Great job! Let's now finish the rest of our hair by going to the left side, curve, and then curve. But make sure to stop and leave yourself enough space there for her neck. Curve and curve. All right, we'll come back to that neck in a bit. Let's go ahead and work on her eyes. We want to find that spot on her face where you've got those curves meeting up. We're going to draw a rainbow curve going down and then curving back up. Curve and curve back up. Now we do need to draw those irises, so we're going to draw a circle inside. I like to make sure that I leave myself enough space in there because she is slightly looking up. And same on the right side. Now we do want to add that highlight to our eyes, so we're going to draw a circle and then another circle behind it. Circle again and another circle behind the smaller circle. Might look a little bit confusing right now, but no worries. We will be filling in that part of the eye later. Let's go ahead and add those eyebrows next. And then I'm going to add just a slightly curved line. That's part of the nose here, where that bridge the nose is. Then I am going to curve out and in and add a small line. Now for those lips, we're going to curve up, down, up, down, and then a U-shaped curve. 
Great job. I'm going to add a slightly curved line and then another curved line. Her mouth is open. Now we're going to work on that neck. Remember how you see right here that we made sure that hair didn't touch the head? Because we need to make sure we draw that neck down here, making sure to match up with the hair. And on this side, we'll stop there. Because her shoulder is slightly turned, um, so we don't see all of her neck and collarbone right there. Now, we're going to add the collar to her dress. We're going to go behind the hair on the left side, curve out, and then back in. Go back to where the hair is on the right side, curve out, and then back in, but you're going to continue that almost to the bottom of your paper. And then you're going to connect with a curved line. Great job. We'll add the rest of our shirt here by adding that curve. And then, before we add any more to that collar, we do need to add those sleeves. Let's work on the left sleeve first by finding the middle of this line here, curve down and then out. And then for this sleeve, we're going to draw a rainbow curve and then curve out and out. Then we can go back a little bit below that collar and curve there and it's slightly curved here. Because remember, that collar is attached to the rest of her dress. All right, this is just our practice draw. We're not going to add any of those details quite yet. If you're still working on your practice draw, no worries, you can always press pause and rewind if you need to. But I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my final draw next. So we'll go ahead and take out that new piece of paper. This is the one that we're going to be coloring on. And make sure, once again, you are still using that pencil, but I'm using that Sharpie so you can see my lines. All right. Making sure that your paper is vertical, I'm going to start with the top of her head, or excuse me, where her forehead is, because her bangs do come down on her forehead. I'm going to curve down and curve again. Remember, this part is part of her forehead. But I do need to draw that slightly stretched out letter S. Then I can go back here, curve out at a point, and back to that letter S, curve down. Now once before we start on the face, let's finish the rest of the hair by drawing that circle for the bow and then draw that letter C that then curves back to the bow and finishes off in a curve. So it almost looks like a letter G actually. Same thing, out, down, and curve back in. Great job. For the rest of that ribbon, we do need to draw a curve line down and then back up and curve all the way down and then curve back up. Now we're going to add that rainbow and then stop and then we'll add that big curve and another curve. Remember, make sure not to connect that to the head quite yet. Same on this side. All right, so here we have Snow White's head. Let's go back and add those details now on the face. We are going to draw a curve going down and curve back, curve up, curve back to the other side. Now those irises 
I'm going to draw those circles, but make sure part of that circle is obscured by the top of the eye. And same on the left side. Then I'm going to draw a circle with another circle behind it. Circle and another circle. This time I do want to add my eyelashes. So I'm just drawing a curve out back in, out and in, out and in. You can add as many eyelashes as you would like. I'm just adding four. And make sure that they get smaller as they get closer to the center of the head. I'm going to go ahead and draw those eyebrows. Then a curve for the bridge of the nose. Curve out and in, and a slight line for that nostril. Let's go ahead and start on those lips now by curving up, down, up, down, and a U-shaped curve. I'm going to add a curve line and a U-shaped curve. All right. Now that we have Snow White's face and head drawn, let's go ahead and move on to that neck by making sure as we're drawing that curve line down, we're lining it up with her hair. So curve down and back, and then slight curve on the right side. All right, we do need to start those collars. So we're going to go to the left side of her hair Curve down off the page, and then curve back almost to the bottom. Make sure to leave yourself enough room. Then, curve out and back in, making sure you're trying your best to line that up with the bottom of her neck. And then you can attach by drawing that curved line. So if you didn't want to draw the sleeves, you could leave it like this if you wanted to. However, I am going to continue on with the rest of her outfit. I'm going to go in this space here, curve out and off the page, go to the collar in the middle, curve down and back out. Now before we add the back to that collar, we do need to draw that puffy sleeve by drawing a rainbow and curve out, and curve out. Then we're going to go in this section here and curve that down to the top of her sleeve. And we do need to make sure that we have that separation between her top and that collar, so I'm going to draw a slightly slanted line. All right, now looking at my Snow White, there are a few things that are missing, and I am missing those teardrop shapes that are on her sleeve. So I'm going to draw one here, and two on this side. Now make sure as you are drawing those teardrop shapes that they aren't straight up and down teardrops. You want to make sure that they curve with the movement of the sleeve. Now, you can leave it like this if you would like to, or you can add some more details to your background. Since Snow White was living in a forest with seven dwarfs, I want to emphasize that she was living in that forest. So I'm going to add some leaves to my background. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a castle in the background. Maybe you want to add that cottage where the seven dwarves lived. That is up to you. Or maybe you want to just make a nice garden picture because you finally met her Prince Charming. Again, this is up to you. But I'm just adding those leaves. And that is it for our final draw. If you are still working adding any of those details, you are more than welcome to press pause on the video. But when you are done with your picture, it should look a little something like this.
So here is my picture drawn in pencil. I know it is a little bit tricky to see, but it is there. I'm going to put my pencil aside, but I may need my eraser to erase anything. And you can either follow along with me on the coloring steps, or you can color in any way that you would like. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline a few of these areas here and there with either Sharpie or marker. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking my um, brown permanent marker and the only areas that I am going to outline brown are her face, part of the neck, her nose, and her eyes because she has brown eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and very carefully outline my pencil lines. in just the right areas. Now with noses, um, since um, Snow White is quite a dainty princess, you want to make sure that you don't draw that long curve right there. Um, you do want to just emphasize though that her head is slightly turned. But I'm also going to outline only the iris of her eyes. And also, I am going to add the bottom lid with brown. All right. And then I'm also going to draw that part, or excuse me, outline. And also, only just about right here, because this becomes part of the collar. And it will make sense as we do continue to color along. But I am going to put my brown away. And now I am going to take out either a black marker or a black Sharpie because now I am going to outline the top of her eyes. and outline those eyelashes. The highlight and the pupil. And I'm also going to outline her eyebrows. If you made them thick like I did, outline them. Just don't forget to fill them in. So I'm actually going to take that time to fill in those eyebrows so I don't forget. And I'm going to fill in that pupil. And also those eyelashes. Now you can make them simple lines with your Sharpie. However, I like to look, have them um, look a little bit more full and not quite like spider legs. Now I'm going to outline her hair. And as I'm outlining, I want to make sure that I am not um, what's sort of going over that bow. Because even though this part right here is part of her hair, the rest of that bow is going to be red. All right. Now, if you wanted to, you could outline your entire picture in black. However, I like that nice, soft, delicate tones of other colors. Black makes it look a little bit more pop art, more cartoon, like you would see in a comic book. So I'm just going to stick with outlining only that in black. Now I can move on to my red. Now I do have this nice set of markers. I like the colors in this. They're bold and bright colors. I feel like they look a little bit more princess-like. So we've got this nice infrared. And I am going to outline my bow using that red. But 
I am not going to fill in. But I am also going to outline those teardrop shapes on her sleeves. Now if you wanted to, you could fill it in, but if you are following along with me, we are going to be doing something a little bit different than what we normally do with colored pencil, but we'll come back to that in a bit. I am also going to outline her lips. And then I'm going to be taking a gray And I'm going to now outline her collar. And this part right here too is part of her collar. And same right here. Now with her outfit, her sleeves are light blue and her top is dark blue. So I'm going to be taking my light blue and I'm going to outline those sleeves. And I'm also going to outline these two lines that I added here. That's um, a stripe down the front of her shirt. But she also has dark blue for a shirt. I'm going to go ahead and find my dark blue. I've got my blue Mr. Sketch Marker. And I am going to outline this part and this part to her shirt. All right, now those leaves can be any color that you would like. Um, in the movie Snow White, the leaves tend to be um, more neutral, earthy colors. They're browns and greens and oranges. So I'm going to go for that look. I have these um, touch markers. They work very well with blending. But for today, I am just going to use them for, for outlining. But I'm just going to take my touch markers and just make some of them brown, some of them green. But you can have all your leaves the same color. Maybe you want them more red for fall. That is up to you. All right. Have this more coppery looking brown. And again, I'm just outlining those leaves. I'm not filling them in. And I also have this nice dark green. Now, normally I tell people to put that cap on the back, but unfortunately with these touch markers, there is no way for it to stay on the back. Those are all the leaves that I'm going to add. For now, I am done with my markers, so I'm just going to put those away for now. But, however, I am going to use some of my markers now that I think about it. I am going to be using some of those markers to fill in those eyes. Actually, scratch that. I already outlined them. I'm going to do that in colored pencil. So we are officially done with our markers right now. Let's go ahead and take out our colored pencils. We will come back to some marker steps later, um, but for right now, let's just focus on the colored pencils. So for the colored pencils, I'm going to be working on her shirt and the bow and her lips and some of those leaves as well, because I'm going to be teaching you a new technique that we haven't learned much at FIBO, and that's actually going to involve baby oil. But first, let's go ahead and color that shirt. So we're going to take our light blue, and we're just going to very softly fill in 
that sleeve. Now while you are filling in that sleeve with your light blue, do you ever find that <clears throat> no matter how many layers of colored pencils you add to your paper, you can still see that white in the background, or you may find it hard to get that nice, smooth, even color. Baby oil actually helps make it so it all smooths together. However, you do need quite a bit of colored pencil on your picture. So let's take that moment to fill in those sleeves. So even though it looks like mine is completely filled, I'm actually going to go back over and make it just a bit darker. You can even press a little bit harder to add that shading underneath the collar. And the more shading you add on your picture and highlights, the more realistic it'll become. Now with our Disney princesses, we do want to make them look really nice and soft, um, especially Snow White because um, in the movie she's a very delicate picture. If you've ever watched Snow White, you can see that she likes to lift her hands and kind of put her fingers together. It's very delicate movements. Her mannerisms are certainly different from Elsa or Moana. And we still want to show that nice softness in our picture. Now if you want to, you can also go to the other sleeve and add that light blue. And as you can see, I still have some white streaks, so I just need to take care of, the, of that. But baby oil will help prevent um, any of that paper really showing through. But if you don't have baby oil, that's okay. You can just use colored pencil and leave it as is. All right, and I'm just going through, making sure that these are filled in. Now, before we do move on to the baby oil step, I recommend that we also add the red to those sleeves. Baby oil is, of course, made out of oil. And it can get a little bit messy if we use too much. So word of caution, as you are using your baby oil, make sure you're only using just a little bit at a time. All right, so I just added my blue. If you wanna go over and make some of those areas a little bit darker, you can do that. Like down here, for example, I need just a little bit more blue. And now I'm going to move on to my red. In my red, I'm going to fill in those teardrop shapes. Now the nice thing about this method as well is it creates some pretty interesting textures so it doesn't look like one solid flat color. But again, the baby oil method um, is completely optional. You do not have to do it if you don't feel like it. If you aren't using baby oil, I just recommend using markers to fill in these areas then. All right, so there are my sleeves. Now what I recommend doing is you're going to take your darker blue and add just a little bit of shading underneath that collar on the left side. And a little bit under here as well. And let me show you how cool it is that you can use baby oil to blend your colored pencils. So I've got a palette right here. 
I'm also going to be using Q-tips. You can use a paintbrush, however, I find Q-tips are um, just as effective. Now, if you need help from mom or dad pouring that baby oil, I highly recommend it. In fact, I only, um, I kept the top on and just poked a hole right there just to make sure it doesn't get everywhere because it kind of does, even when you close the lid. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that baby oil and put it in my palette. And then make sure you close that lid tight. Because what you do with this Q-tip, and again, you can use a paintbrush, but Q-tip works just fine. I'm just gonna dip that Q-tip into your um, baby oil and you're just gonna go over and just blend in circular motions. And as you can see already, that colored pencil starts to blend on your paper. So this is a great way to really blend those colored pencils instead of using all sorts of different layers. And you don't need a whole lot of baby oil. As you can see, I didn't dip my um, Q-tip back into my um, baby oil because it's working really well. And that way it becomes this nice, soft, light blue. Do the same thing. I'm just going to dip again and blend in circular motions on the right sleeve. If you want to, you can even push, push yourself further to use even more different shades of blue for that um, blending and shading. But I am just going to keep going with my baby oil and these sleeves. Now if you find that maybe you still don't have enough of that light blue on your picture, no worries, you can easily go back and color on that colored pencil again because that actually helps it to blend even more. So right here, I still have a little bit of a white streak so I can easily go back over and blend and add more color with my colored pencil. Same right here. I can always go back over and add just a little bit more. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and finish that blue. And I'm getting as close as I can to those red raindrops. Still getting as close as I can. And I'm making sure to only blend in the blue areas. Because also the nice thing about using Q-tips is you can easily switch it to the other side, dip in that baby oil, and move on to a different color. And there we go, we are blending some more. So that way it nicely blends in with our marker outlines and we don't see those annoying pens or paper lines <coughs> excuse me from um, coloring because again sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to really blend those colored pencils but baby oil helps to achieve that nice blend and also baby oil smells pretty good too all right Now there is one downside to baby oil and that is that it is super oily. So when we do move on to our bow, be extra careful not to put your arm on your picture because you could get some of that oil on and it could spread on your picture. In fact, let's move on to the bow right now and then we'll come back to her shirt. So I'm just gonna do some red colored pencil Now you could do her whole picture, or this whole picture in colored pencil, um, but I like to switch up mediums a bit just to really um, play with those different types of art mediums because sometimes um, certain art materials give that different effect. But you can use whatever art materials you would like for your picture. All 
All right, I'm just making sure to really color in that bow. For my advanced students, I encourage you to always add that shading to the bow. So you would add some shading behind here and right here as well. And also here. And I'm going to take this moment now, since I do have my red colored pencil in my hand, I am going to color those lips. Alright, so now that I've colored those lips, I'm going to put my red away and go back to my red part of my Q-tip, dip it in that oil, and blend. You can go in circular motions if you would like and go back and forth. Just really make sure you are getting that entire area with baby oil. You just keep blending. Like I said earlier, if you find that maybe it's not red enough, you can easily just grab that red again and add a little bit more because you can color on top of baby oil. Still blending, getting as close as I can to those lines. Also, the nice thing about baby oil is that it doesn't blend too much with that outline marker. And then we'll move on to the lips. All right, so there are my lips. And now, I am going to finish the rest of her shirt with that same method. So I do need to color that stripe down the front with the light blue, but the rest of her shirt is blue. So there's that light blue stripe, and then the dark blue top. Now for sure, um, even if you still have open spaces like this with colored pencils, still really try to get as close as you can to making that um, area as blue as possible. So even though um, the baby oil will blend those areas, if there are certain areas that you didn't um, fully cover with colored pencil, it will just be left white and can even give it a kind of a strange purplish gray hue because of the baby oil. So I really encourage you still to color as much as you can of those areas with colored pencil. All right, now I can go in. I've got blue on the other side of my Q-tip. Bring it through and Ooh, that was a lot of baby oil, so try your best to spread that around. And if it is still too light, like mine kind of is, you can easily go back over and use more colored pencil. So my shirt's still a little bit too light. I'm just gonna go back over and color over again. Because doing this, your colored pencils will still blend with that baby oil and will still make it darker. All right, getting as close as I can to the bottom. And there we go. All right, isn't that awesome how that baby oil just makes things blended together? We still need to finish those eyes. Snow White does have brown eyes, but they're more of a lightish brown perhaps. So I'm gonna be taking my regular brown and filling in 
the iris of her eyes. And then same thing with my Q-tip. I do want to make sure that I have a nice fresh one because both sides have red or blue. So I'm going to be taking a new Q-tip and mixing it with the brown. And as you can see, that baby oil will not mix with the Sharpie. And if you want it to be a little bit darker, you can easily go back with your brown colored pencil again and make it darker. Here we go. And there's our steps for our colored pencils. Now, I know I said earlier that we were done with our markers, but we're going to actually fill in Snow White's hair with a black marker. I recommend using the Mr. Sketch just because it has that nice um, chisel point at the top and it makes it really easy to outline and then fill it in. So I'm going to take my Mr. Sketch marker. I'm going to endure that black licorice smell. It's definitely not my favorite smell. But I'm going to outline, getting as close as I can to my lines. And even though I did outline Snow White's hair with a Sharpie, I still want to go over and outline it one last time just to make sure I do stay in that area. And same here. Now this part is going to be hidden. We will bring it back with chalk pastel. But make sure to get as close as you can to those lines as possible. I am going to put my water palette away since I don't need that right now. And then I'm going to fill it in with those long strokes top to bottom. I want to make sure that I'm being nice and even with my lines. I'm trying my best not to scribble, scrabble. And I'm making sure to get all those white spots. Now, a few facts about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. When Walt Disney decided to make this full-length feature film that was animated, people laughed at him. Um, just because cartoons back in the day were silly, there were pranks and jokes, and so they didn't think that having a movie for over an hour could be done. And Snow White went through different stages of being redrawn. In fact, some of her earliest um, sketches, she looked a little bit more like Betty Boop. If you don't know who Betty Boop is, definitely ask your mom or dad or even your grandparents. Um, she definitely didn't look as um, delicate and as um, not realistic per se, but um, our Snow White currently has a lot better um, proportions than the Betty Boop model. Also, in the movie, they did add blush to her cheeks in every single frame. But yeah, it was one of Walt Disney's first films. All right, almost done with that hair. Again, make sure to go over, check if there's any white spots. Easily can go back over. I always encourage you to use those long strokes top to bottom. And there we go. Before I add my chalk pastel, I do want to grab my brown colored pencil real quickly, 
just to add an eyelid above her eyes. And now I'm going to be moving on to those chalk pastels. So I'm going to put my colored pencils away and take out those chalk pastels. Now the bigger sets are a bit better just because um, Snow White, she's a fair character, she has lighter skin. Um, however, we do need to do a little bit of mixing with her skin. So what I am going to do is I'm going to get this peachy color and I'm going to go over very, very lightly. And I'm going to try my best to refrain from going on top of those eyes. I know it may be a little bit hard to see um, how much chalk dust is on her face, but I promise you it is there. But I'm emphasizing to you that don't press too hard. So there I have a little bit on her face. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of this kind of beige looking color. Just a tiny bit on top of that as well. Again, she's a very fair character. Her name's Snow White. All right. Then you're going to put that away. Take one or two fingers and blend very softly. Try your best not to go over her eyes. If you do go over them, that's okay because with chalk pastel, you can erase it, but you still have to be pretty careful. So there is her face. Now, if you find that her eyebrows or her lips look a little bit um, faded out, can easily get an eraser and you can erase on top of her eyebrows and her eyelashes. Just be extra careful though. We do need to add some more details so let's now grab kind of this lighter brown. We're going to go over and very gently just go underneath her chin and do a little bit on the side here. And very carefully, I'm just going to go back and forth to add that shading. I'll do the same thing on top of her eyelid. Very, very carefully. Sometimes I even whisper just to um, share how quiet or how soft we need to be. Go over those eyes as well. You can even add a little bit under her nose. We do need to take our gray and we're going to add just a little bit inside of that collar. I'm going to blend. I'm getting as close as I can to that hair. And then I'll keep blending. Now Snow White wouldn't be Snow White without that blush on her cheeks. However, we don't want to add too much because she may look like a, look like a clown if we do that. What I recommend doing is you're going to get a paper towel. It doesn't matter what size. I actually just ripped this to make it a little bit smaller so it fits easier on my finger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper towel and I'm going to go wrap it on top of my finger. And I'm going to be taking my red. I'm using this red here. It's a more kind of a little bit red orange. And I'm just going to rub my finger on top of that chalk pastel. So you should have just a little bit. And very carefully, I'm just going to go in circular motions to add that blush. If you need more, you can easily go back over and add more blush. Now, right now, it's looking a little too much now to easily take that paper towel and blend. So there she has her nice blush. 
again, when Walt Disney wanted um, Snow White to have those rosy cheeks, and he asked the lady assistants who were doing the coloring, he asked them saying, well, how do you know where to put that blush on each time the woman looked at him and they had said, well, we apply blush every day on our cheeks, Walt Disney, so we know where to put it. So um, thanks to those ladies for making her cheeks look extra soft. So we wanted to do that as well. All right, so there's our chalk pastel step. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, you can always go back and add those colored pencils, add some shading in those teeth, or do a little bit of shading on that eyelid. However, I am gonna be switching gears and moving on to my watercolors next. So I'm gonna put my chalk pastels aside with my colored pencils. Now, even though I have my watercolors, I am gonna make sure not to use the same area where my baby oil is because oil and water do not mix. So, I'm gonna scooch this to the side so you can see my colors. Now you can use any colors you want for your background. I'm gonna be sticking to my nice um, fall colors with those gold and green leaves with a purple background. So I'm gonna just take my medium brush and I am first going to paint my leaves with like yellow gold. So I'm gonna take some yellow, make sure you're not mixing it in the palette with your baby oil. I'll add a tiny bit of yellow, orange, and brown, and mix. So I'm gonna start painting my leaves. And you could also do that same step with the colored pencils if you'd like. Um, if you wanna add a little bit more shading, that's up to you. And again, that same color is yellow, a little bit of yellow, orange, and brown. Now the unfortunate thing about watercolors is that they do mix with markers, so you do have to be careful as you are painting your leaves. For my darker leaves, I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow-orange to that first mixture. So mostly brown and yellow-orange. And carefully, I'm going to paint those leaves. If you want to wait for them to dry, you can add even more details, like those lines. There we go. And then I'm gonna have some green mixed with my yellow, orange, and brown. Add a little bit of brown and yellow, orange. And I'm gonna paint those leaves. So it's that nice earthy tone. Always easily go back over and add that shading with colored pencil if you would like. And those are all my green leaves. If you want to add just a little bit more behind, you can do that as well. That just look a little bit faded behind. All right, I'm gonna paint my background a purple but you can choose any color that you would like. Remember, make sure you avoid mixing any paint with your baby oil. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of red violet with that purple. And very carefully, I'm gonna start painting my background. I'm using the medium brush. I haven't used any size except for the medium brush. But I'm gonna get as close as I can to those leaves and paint my background. 
but you can choose any colors you want for that background. That is up to you. Also, word of caution, as you are painting, be careful as you go around Snow White's head because if you do get that watercolor on her hair, that black marker will bleed all over that background. So be extra, extra careful. And as you are painting, make sure to go over your white spots. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Really spread that paint. If you need to make more, again, I used red violet mixed with purple. I'm still getting as close as I can, really making sure I don't have any white spots, and then it's a nice even color. <clears throat> All right, I am almost done with my background. When you are done, you can give your picture a little bit of bling. But make sure that everything on your picture is completely done. You have added all that shading you've needed to. You've added those details. You can even go back over with some markers and add some lines to those leaves if you need to. That is up to you. In fact, I'm just going to add some lines to those leaves real quickly before I move on to the rest of my picture. So I'm just going to add some lines here. And I saw that I forgot to paint that area, so I'm going to quickly paint that because, again, do make sure before you add some of that extra sparkle onto your picture, everything is completely done. Add some lines here. And here too. And then I'll grab my green. If you are still working on your picture, no worries, just keep going. But you can call this done or you can give it some more um, sparkle and make it more princess-like and I will show you how to do that. 